Yes. Okay. Uh, how was the 1958 race for the House? Did you have an easier time the second time around? It was the easiest race I ever had in the some 25 years I was running for public office. 58 was the easiest one. On the surface, it looked like it should have been the toughest. I was running against a World War II Congressional Medal of Honor winner, uh, Joe Foss. Yes. He, uh, he holds the record for the number of Japanese planes shot down in World War II. He shot down 26 planes with oh. American flying ace. But um, when he tried to build his campaign on that uh, claim, a lot of people in South Dakota said, well, look, George McGovern is, uh, holds the Distinguished Flying Cross. Uh, he was a bomber pilot, and uh, we're going to choose on the basis of flying valor. Uh, this is not a contest. Most of these are good men. <laughs> so they, they, they made the decision on the basis of who they thought was uh, best able to serve the interests of the state, and I was lucky enough to come out on top. Yes, and Senator, of course, Joe Foss eventually became governor, did he not? He, uh, he was governor of the state, and a rather popular one. He later went on to become the first commissioner of the American Football League. That's right, yes, yes. Now, in 1960, you challenged Carl Munt for a seat in the Senate. Uh, I guess our question there is, do you think your support of the Kennedy-Johnson team may have hurt your own chances there? Well, there's no question about it. That doesn't mean that I regret that decision, but I, uh, uh, I think you know that South Dakota was not only a conservative Republican state, it was a very strong Protestant state. And in those days, hard as this seems to believe now, uh, there was great opposition to a Catholic being president of the United States, uh, especially a young Boston Irishman. Yes. Uh, and Nixon was very popular in our state, uh, and uh, he, uh, he carried the state two to one so that a great many people just stayed on the Republican side. They voted for Nixon for president, and they just stayed over there on that side of the ballot and marked it for Carl Munt for the Senate. Now, I only lost my state by a margin of 1%, mm. whereas uh, Jack Kennedy lost the state 2 to 1. So there's no question that's what took me down in 1960. Yes, but as you say, if you had to do it over again, you'd still support the ticket. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I still think... Uh, well, Kennedy was not a perfect president. I think that he was preferable to uh, Richard Nixon, who I later was to run against 12 years later. Yes, yes, and the Nixon name would come up in your career again. That's correct. Uh, Senator, the 1962 race, of course, now you were victorious over Lieutenant Governor Bottom. Uh, I guess we'd like to know what happened here versus 60 that uh, now put you in the Senate. Well, first of all, I announced in 1962 with the encouragement of President Kennedy, for whom I had been working in the 61 and 62, I announced against the incumbent Senator Francis Case. Yes. And uh, to everyone's uh, surprise and shock, he died suddenly uh, shortly, shortly after I got into the race. And the governor named uh, Lieutenant Governor Joseph Bottom, who was a a uh, well-known attorney in the state uh, as the replacement for Senator Case, so he, he became my opponent. And I was able to defeat him by a narrow margin of about 597 votes. We actually had to have a recount in order to decide who had won the election. I didn't know until 30 days after the election was over how it was going to come out. Boy, so was that a senator was within 600 votes? Actually, uh, it was. It, uh, uh, it, on election night, the Associated Press had me winning by about 218 votes. I think the United Press had it at about 140 votes, something like that. And so we had a recount, and uh, I picked up another three or 400 votes on the recount. <laughs> Ended up with a margin of 597 out of a total of 300,000 votes. So anytime anyone tells you that one vote is not important, uh, they'll have a hard time convincing me of that. I remember on election night when the returns were coming in, they would say that uh, uh, Mr. McGovern has now taken a six-vote lead. <laughs> uh, and then uh, 20 minutes later, they would say uh, Senator Bottom has now moved ahead by three votes on the basis of returns from such and such a county. And it just weaved back and forth all night long until far into the next uh, morning 
before we finally knew who was ahead. Isn't that that's really close. Boy, 